Hannah's first appearance and, well, disappearance immediately gets us to question what's real and what's fantasy in this modern folktale. And then an in-your-face title card that closes out the shortest and most concise prologue ever. I just missed your heart. She's skilled, merciless, somewhere between dispassionate yet compassionate about taking life, and her name's Hannah. Ah! Intensity. So their hut was built for real with no modern tools, no nails, just whatever two survivalists would have. How much did you pull off the deer? 120 with scraps. 200 pounds in total. That explains it. How you beat me getting strong. A hint that she might be enhanced if she's dragging a deer twice her weight through the snow, and we know she speaks at least four languages. German. Next is my mahi espesa. Italian. La prossima volta farà meglio. Espanol. Te verá? Querías que te partiera el cuello? How perfect is it that Hannah reads Grimm's fairy tales, the ones with the more realistic and dire endings? The type you could make the claim this movie is? I don't know how synchronous bamboo stick tapping improves your combat skills, but I'd really like to learn. Ha! <laughs> the joke later is that Eric never told Hannah about magic, but that's because they both are magic. That's an uncut take! How'd he get up there so fast? Cute wolf pups are a win all by themselves, but together with the hidden pictures of her mother and her insistence that she's ready, without much other dialogue, we learn that Hannah is just about done being trapped in the wilderness. And we even understand now why she added a dog called Trudy to her backstory. I also have a dog called Trudy. Also, they dyed her eyebrows, giving her a very wolf-like appearance. Are you Nell from the movie Nell? She won't stop until you're dead. Or she is. Clairvoyance. And Laika had always been intended to die. But she didn't, did she? They couldn't be in the rocket back, remember? I remember. But sometimes I wish you would read it differently. Hannah only ends up going around Northern Africa and Eastern Europe, but I understand why she'd want to change the story. Prepare yourself to hear me praise the score even more than normal because holy cow! One of the best things about it is that the line between sound effects, score, and diegetic music is all blurred, creating a fever dream at times. Hugging. How does it look? Good. Almost good. <laughs> I mean, better than almost for his new wave synth pop band. The address where we meet. Willem Grimm's house, Stefanstrasse, 261 Berlin, Germany. As Sersha Ronan repeats the address again, faster than I can speak in my native accent, it feels like a good time to point out that Sersha has an Irish accent, but her German accent is impeccable, as far as I can tell. Eric Heller. You were his handler, right? Sure. Name sounds familiar. And obviously no big surprise that Australian-born Kate Blanchett can do pretty much any accent ever, but still, you, you take your win, Kate. Ooh, and look at that bright light from the chopper reflected in her eye. And now the Chemical Brothers score is really coming through for the first time. Almost 20 minutes in, which makes complete and total sense when you consider Hannah and Eric's off-the-grid life. So here comes civilization to crash down on her. What do you like? Music? <laughs> You'd think that would have worked. What does music feel like? But now we know she's one-track-minded. I want to speak to Marissa Vigla. <laughs> Hugging? Yeah, not really. Tension when the good guy is in no danger is an odd feeling. Like, it's an awkward position to hug a stranger regardless, but also we know she's planning to kill her. Sorry, Mary, your time will come, but not today. Today you're just a terrible southern accent on a bad wig and a broken neck. Oh. <laughs> I love the sheer stun. Not totally from fear. She's impressed. <laughs> Did I mention the Chemical Brothers are like 50% of why I love this movie? Another disappearance like in the opening, but this time it's actually a cut to a different part of the tunnel, showing how easy it would be to get totally turned around and lost unless you're a genetic super soldier. Like, on repeat for months after seeing this movie. Soundtrack, on a loop. Just ask Julia. Ha! So rather than falling down the rabbit hole, Hannah struggles and claws her way up to come out of the rabbit hole and invade our world. And I just don't get tired of the magic. There's a somewhat off-putting tone to this sequence. We see Eric with Hannah and Johanna in the car briefly, but then since it's Marissa's memory, the rest is one long take from her perspective. And our brains sort of fill in the usual elements of scenes like this. You can almost hear Johanna saying, leave me behind, take her and protect her, as Eric was trying to drag her away. And the dusk coloring is unsettling as if they were so close to escaping into the night. It all feels very final. MIA couldn't speak English until she was eight because she was like a refugee or something from Sri Lanka. Goodness, I love Sophie. She's so out of place in this sometimes self-serious film. Who's she? I found her. She can't speak English. She's from Sri Lanka. <laughs> And she immediately tells him the story she made up. Eric Banner's workout routine? Interestingly, this was another long take, but Wright felt like it was a little too slow, so he cut away from it, but the shots used are all from the same take. Could you get me an automobile? 
<laughs> Five languages. <laughs> During this entire exchange, he's making excuses for the low quality while she's blown away by all the mod guns. <laughs> I have more to say about this later, but one of the themes that runs through the film is that even though Eric literally spent Hannah's entire life preparing her, he underestimated how important prep for more ordinary, everyday situations would be. We would only hold hands, and I think I'd probably marry a man. What? Appropriate reaction. The devil is in the details, isn't he? That is the name of the song, and is also one of the slyest ways of saying, <laughs> Money, please! This is my face, take it or leave it. <laughs> That's not nice. Still honesty. I love Hannah just nodding along and agreeing with everything, like they're speaking a different language. What did your mum die of? Three bullets. <laughs> Ganter. The score is so intrusive, overpowering, but still synced with the sound design of the world, tying each location to the next in one cohesive mood. Also Tom Hollander shorts. So take a chance. Speaking of music, David Bowie is always a win. Eh, it works. She could just be talking about the Wizard of Oz. Footballers haven't got their eyebrows waxed or anything. Good. <laughs> Playing along skills. They are a real gypsy band and they really perform for the cast and crew. The most important muscle involved is the orbicularis oris muscle. I love the implication that either Eric read to Hannah about kissing or more likely she looked it up on her own and the only information provided was about muscle movements, which wouldn't even remotely prepare her for what's to come, making her reaction fitting. But you can't even blame him for thinking she might be genuinely flirting. Should I let him go? As opposed to what? <laughs> now we're flirting. Sophie. Is that you? This is the Sandman. Creepy. Haben Sie sie gesehen? Hannah. Always framing these terrible shots so beautifully. But I've always loved this line delivery because it sounds bananas in English. Hannah. So is it weird inflection in German too or totally normal? Hannah. I'd like to have a friend. I mean, you're a freak and everything, but I like you. Compliments? Oh, I found nice. breakfast. Generosity. I think Banksy could make a case for an IP suit here. The old looking at the watch trick. Dang, this scene. It's so long, the walk takes so long, and it's all in one take, and now the score is picking up. What a way to build tension. Another three plus minute one -er. And now hits in time with the score? Love the way the steady cam keeps moving in a circle around the fight. You know it had to be choreographed to accommodate that. Is that a double kill? I think it counts. Either way, insane and awesome, and I love this scene. Bring him to Beekler. She will ID and interview. Is that what she said? Ago. And it even has a purpose because now Eric knows Marissa's alive. Is it the best track? I think so. A brief moment of freedom and peace for Hannah, who's been through quite a bit. Look, if you can't control your job, at least you can control gingivitis and cavities, am I right? Eric, are you still there? That was a surprise and a fun practical effect where Lewis was truly yanked backward. It never has a kick felt so angry. Move. Get up. Trinity, this you? Now we're getting to the part of the movie that is so entangled with the score, it's like a music video. The second you hear it coming in, you know we're headed towards something epic. Hannah, what's going on? Even when they pull over, it slows down, but it never really stops. And then it kicks in heavy as Hannah starts kicking heavy. The flow of this quick extended take with the repeated shot of Isaacs noticing Hannah above the second time. Yep. Brutal. Have I mentioned the soundtrack is fantastic? I know, I keep forgetting. Please remind me. I don't know why I love that his pipe flips are in time with his whistling, but I do. Say please. Please. You know, Kate Blanchett is always a win, but sometimes I realize I don't think I'd be surprised to see her eat a child's face off. He didn't tell you about my magic. There are so many things this movie dips its toe into but doesn't really explore, like the idea of a young girl isolated from people, society, culture, childhood, and then dumping her into the real world where she has to kill people and then immediately making her storybook come to life. Is magic real? Are the Grimm's fairy tales real? She doesn't have a clue, and her wonder at it all is fantastic. May I have one? An egg? Of course. You can eat whatever you want, my dear. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. Upstairs with you, my dear. Quickly. I'll still give Reznor and Ross the edge on the reimagining of In the Hall of the Mountain King, but the Chemical Brothers mess with it in a way that actually adds tension, which is impressive since it's such a tense piece to begin with. Everybody thinks Aaron so. <laughs> oh man, that's a wicked witch laugh. Huh, this poster seems to be tracking her journey with a camel and a reindeer. Treated you like you're my own flesh and blood. But I'm not your flesh and blood. I'm abnormal. No! Where was I born? The reveal here is like the most basic secret enhanced assassin plot ever, but it doesn't matter because these two performances are killer. I tried to prepare you for what your life would be. You didn't prepare me for this. There it is. Parenting, am I right? If a dude who raised his daughter in the wilderness hammering survival and combat skills into her can't get it right, what chance do we have? Run. That chance. Always love, always sacrifice. Run. <laughs> Ingenuity. Run, little piggy. I love that Isaacs could just be poking fun at the craziness happening around him with his fairy tale mockery, or he's a part of it and it's a deliberate signal that it is a fairy tale. So off to grandmother's house we go. Ooh, that's insanely brutal. They either skipped a frame or speed ramped that one shot. Another one! Brutal. <laughs> That's so depressing. He was so close. That's a crushed man. Why now, Eric? Kids, grow up. I know some of us left this movie feeling a little let down, but I love that it's that simple. This entire time, Marissa has been racking her brain for why Eric chose now to come back, and the truth is that he didn't. Hannah did. And the reason is... She wanted to. This is a motif from Marissa that contrasts her with Hannah and Eric. Notice that she looks away before firing. She does the same thing in the flashback of her car crash, not looking until after she hears the crash. And when Hannah is unflinchingly murdering guards in the compound, Marissa flinches with each gunshot. She does not seem to like death. Again, Hannah's new world is shattered and all the fun is sucked out. I know I talk about scores and soundtracks a lot in general, but this one is so integral to the film, the movie probably doesn't work without it. It sets pace, tone, and the continuity of the entire score creates a surreal flow that makes it all feel destined even if it's messy and chaotic at the same time. Listen to this percussion. Now that's a villain entrance, coming out of the wolf's mouth. Let me go. This could have been a ploy to turn around so she could draw the arrow, but eh, I don't think so. We also know that Hannah has a sixth sense about danger and guns being pointed at her, and I like the idea that she was done. She wanted to walk away, even though Marissa had killed her father, she was willing to end it. But ultimately, I have to imagine Eric's words rang in her head as she felt the barrel pointed at her. She won't stop until you're dead, or she is. <laughs> And in case you were wondering what she shot the arrow with, it's this bungee she grabbed. Well, a little put it out of its misery shadowing. Dope MW initial graving on the grip. I just missed your heart. There you have it. What an awesome bookend. As abrupt and thankless as the opening, and the rest of the movie for that matter. Even I remember feeling a little let down after Hannah, but really only in the sense that I wanted more. I would have watched a sequel to this movie at any time over the last nine years. There are still so many questions after the final bullet is fired, so many things hinted at that aren't entirely resolved. But at the same time, the main story thread is wrapped up. It's just a coming of age story through the lens of a super assassin. I think the main question is why? Why do any of it? Why not just let Hannah go back to civilization and let bygones be bygones? Well, two reasons. The first is that Eric believes Marissa will hunt them forever, and for Hannah to have a normal life, Marissa has to die. But I think even more vital is that Eric is sort of using Hannah to get a little bit of revenge for Johanna's death and just generally thinks Marissa should die. Either way, the plan was to kill Marissa and then live life. Which segues me into the central theme as I see it, parenting. That's right, last week was about Karate Kid and parents, and here I am again about to talk about parents. It's something I enjoy about this film, whether everything I see is intentional or not. Whenever we see a parent putting their minor child into life-risking situations, it makes us uneasy, as it's intended to. We know it's all supposed to be in the service of protecting Hannah, but it also plays into the movie's realism, that no one is really safe. Their practice fights are controlled, but still risky. He also leaves her in the wild to drag a deer twice her size out of the woods. We get the feeling he's there to make sure she survives, but it's a tough love, trial-by-fire style parenting for sure. Sophie's parents even comment on this, and they themselves seem to have different ideas about parenting their children. How much freedom is appropriate, what can adolescents really handle? 
they end up as more of a footnote in the film, but they play right into the theme. Then, we don't learn too much about Marissa Wiegler, but we know that her story is that she didn't have children for career reasons, and we know that she's a control freak. The tears suggest she wishes she had been a mom, or even that her program was like her baby. She tries out different parenting tactics she's probably picked up along the way. Say please. But her final line is pretty telling of how she really sees Hannah. Don't walk away from me, young lady! At one point, she even seems to show a little parental pride. Did she turn out as you hoped? Better. But when she can't control her proxy daughter, she shoots her. She'd rather Hannah be dead than a bad daughter. Eric is the polar opposite as a man willing to die for his daughter. Kids grow up. He embraces the chaos and has learned that you can't control your children. You can't shape the course of their life even with the insane degree he went to try to send Hannah down a particular path. At the end of the day, he knew it had to be her decision. Will you hunt with me? If you want. It's up to you. Me? Yes. I'll stay. Yes, good. And maybe that's what this movie is ultimately about. Mom grew her in a lab and chose her genes to make her a certain way, but she still came back to kill Mom. Dad isolated her and raised her as if he was God, and she turned on him when she learned the truth. People are individuals, no matter what box you try to force them into. And Hannah has every right to go disappear and do her own thing after realizing that everyone was using her for something. I think Eric truly loved her, but he made some mistakes. The first act of this movie presents the mission as something necessary, when in reality, Hannah had the choice to let it go all along. I think the only way to be super disappointed in this movie, other than to get hung up on all that's left open-ended, would be to expect a super slick breakneck Euro thriller. It may fall short. Saoirse Ronan is absolutely astounding. That was clear even before this, but obviously Lady Bird carved it in stone, but this will always be one of my favorite performances from her. I can always come back to this movie for the score, and since I started writing, I've been listening to it on repeat again. So that was fun to come back to. Next week, no Everything Great About Video, but the week after... Actually, I'm... I'm still not sure. But something. What did I miss? I couldn't do it anymore. I I'm sorry, with Johanna. With all of them. Oh, Eric, you're such a flirt.